ask you this. Mm -hmm. I notice your, your poems. Uh, I'm not that great in writing poems. I mean, I'll do other mm -hmm. kinds of writing. Um, th they don't rhyme. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? What do I call that? Uh, free, free verse. But free you know verse. what? They do. Sometimes I use um, two things. I use alliteration. So you have two words that begin with the same sound. Like, okay. You know. Um, you you give me an example. Um, I, I don't know if I can do it from my one of my. I know my poems have it, but you know, like I do have one. Uh, but it's in there. So That's okay. But it's I, you know. Uh, any any two. Two, yeah, two words that begin with the same sound, like. You know, I can't, I can't think of it. Um, okay. But, and then um, I use internal rhymes sometimes. So sometimes two words inside the poem will rhyme with each other in, in, on the inside of the okay. line, not the end. So in other words, when you write a piece of poetry, mm -hmm. you've got to really think it through. And other factors enter into it besides the content of mm -hmm. the poem. The sounds of the words. Sounds. I start with a rough, dr like I start with a... Um, Isn't there also a meter that goes with it? You know what, I'm going to go back to school. Yeah, there is. I'm going back to school in September, and I'm hoping for this, and I'm hoping that um, I'll learn more. But yes, there's definitely all sorts of meters. It's called feet. Feet. Yeah. So, but I sort of just write how I feel, and I like the sound. I think that's great. So, Super. Thank you. Uh, how about one more poem? Okay, sure. This one's about Brooklyn. Brooklyn? It's, yeah, I, actually two, but I'll, I'll read this one. East 86th Street, Brooklyn, 1972. Old man pushing Kanish cart, wears blue knitted cap, black horn rim glasses, cover squinty eyes. The aroma of burnt charcoal. He yells in the street, hot Kanishes, hot Kanishes, 25 cents. Grandmother smiles, hands me quarter. I place in man's rough hand. Hot knish handed to me in wax paper. I take a bite. Hard crust protecting, soft white potato cloud. Oh. I have another, well. That brings back memories. memories. Yeah, I have two memories of Brooklyn. Like uh, before you do the next yeah. one, tell our viewing audience. What is a kiddish? Oh, a kiddish is a, um, there's different kinds, but it's a, like a, a paste, it's a dough, it's, it's a hard crust, and then inside it's usually um, potatoes or vegetables. and. Right. It's almost on the same order as a, uh, a wonton, yeah. a ravioli, yeah. uh, almost every, a dumpling. Yeah, a dumpling, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's uh, roasted or baked. So and the, and the uh, the dough is a little different. Yeah. So I have that memory of uh, Brooklyn is very unique. That the man with Kanish cart would come down the street and it would smell like a burning smell or like a good smell, and and it was that, that's great. Down the street. Good. You go. All right. One more. This one also is about Brooklyn. It's called Magic Truck. Dingy red truck cradles ride within its steel cage. Little lost amusement park, endlessly wandering down Brooklyn Street, searching for children. Truck stops at my feet. I climb up narrow stairs, hand driver quarter, and find black vinyl covered chair with duct tape cover holes. Hmm. Driver buckles me with a sudden jerk. Chair moves around and around. Track inside truck. Little girl secretly wishes driver forgets to push button that stops ride and it lasts forever. Walking down truck steep stairs, driver calls me sweetheart, shows me basket filled with treats. I choose pink candy lipstick. Oh, that's beautiful. That's let, let, me, let me give no. your, your audience of one Thanks. and applaud. Thank you. That was I understand you also play the flute. I do. And we have, would you believe, about eight minutes oh left. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I told you time will okay. fly. Uh, can you do a couple, couple of solos for sure, us? Sure, sure. Okay, you got to unhook here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. To my audience, you're in for a treat. Not only the poetry, and now we have some beautiful music solos. Um, this one's called Jerusalem of Gold. Jerusalem of Gold. Yes, and um, it was actually written right before the Six Day War because um, Jews could not go into Jerusalem and they were longing to, and that's what the song's about. <laughs>
such a okay. talented young lady. Thank you, thank you. This is called Yadid Nafesh, and it's basically a love song to God. It means beloved of my soul. It's based on a Hebrew prayer. with me 
and handed them to her, and, and the poetry teacher sh saw them and liked them. And um, I bet you flipped. I bet you really enjoyed reading them. I who, oh she she I don't know I mean I, I'm she liked them and actually I'm sure she did. And they you know they accepted me. Um, they only accept about six people a year. Really? So um, it was really just a nice surprise, and I'll start in the fall. And I know from knowing you and your family, you're going to do. A number one. Thank you. You're going to do great. Thank you. And you'll enjoy it. How many days a week will you have to go? Um, I, I'm just, I'd probably just one at night. Do I, no, do I have time for any more poems or not? Yeah. Okay. This one is more. Short one. This is called Ice. Pond, frozen fortress guarding its fish. Encased in icy tank, water is scarce. Child skates above, unaware, flying, whirling, arms extended to sky, zigzag wind breathes her hair, its frigid fingers caress her face. Smooth, soundless scraping, steel blades glide, over ripples glistening, little icy waves under her boots. Trapped un under foggy glass, fish wait below, wait for warmth to come, wait for freedom from ice. Oh, I like that Thank one. Thank you. you. You know, while you're reading it, I could just see the, the person uh, on the ice with the whole fishing mm -hmm. and the fish underneath. Hey. You, you made it come uh, alive. Thank you. The fish were trapped. I mean, I, it was just based on something right. I did as a kid, I remember. But I thinking back, the fish, I was free on the ice and the fish, the poor fish were stuck under there. Stuck underneath there. For the winter. So. Oh, I, I think that that is super. Thank you. Super. We only have one minute left, okay. would you believe? All right. So, do you have any advice yes. for budding poets? I do. Or anyone who anyone who wants to, um, to if, if you have a passion in life, whether it's poetry, music, whatever it is, um, don't give up. If you are in a different situation, if you're a housewife, or like me, or if you are... Or a mother of four kids. Yeah, kids. whatever. Whatever you are, you can pursue your passion and your dream, and uh, that's my message. It's, it's uh, never too late to, to, to do what you really want to do and pursue your dream and passion. Mary, this has been a most extraordinary evening. Thank you. A wonderful program having you on. Thank you. Um, listening to your poems. It's been a pleasure. Hearing the beautiful music. And I want to wish you continued success. Thank you. God should bless you, Wayne, your children, your family, oh. <laughs> and bring you nothing but good luck and nachas and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank pleasure. you. I'll get you again someday. Okay, anytime. Thank, Thank you. you. And to my audience, too, God bless all of you.